So about the total weighted score, no matter how many significant opportunities and threats are included in an external factor evaluation matrix or EFE matrix, an organization may only receive a total weighted score between 4.0 and 1.0, with 4.0 being the maximum possible value with the weighted average score as 2.5. An organization is responding to opportunities and dangers in its industry in an outstanding way if it receives a total weighted score of 4.0. In other words, the company's tactics efficiently maximize already present opportunities and reduce the potential negative impact of outside threats. Whereas the firm's tactics are neither utilizing opportunities or fending off external dangers as shown by a total score of 1.0. Now let's interpret Porsche's EFE matrix. As we've seen in the previous EFE matrix shown, Porsche has a total weighted score of 3.07. This means that Porsche has an above average score. Having an above average score means that Porsche is doing a good job at maximizing and using the opportunities at hand to their advantage. And it also means that Porsche is above average in terms of containing their threats and minimizing its overall impact on their company as a whole. Opportunities. Number one, expansion to other countries or market demographics. The first opportunity has a weight of 0 0.13, being the second highest in the EFE matrix opportunities. With a rating of three, Porsche has made sufficient effort to manage and leverage this opportunity. Porsche has expanded its operations in China and countries in Southeast Asia to further expand their market. Continuing their operations in China and the Southeast Asia is beneficial for Porsche as China continues to be Porsche's largest single market. Additionally, Porsche's projections indicate that the Chinese economy will be expanding. In Japan as well, economic production is anticipated to expand strongly in 2022. According to Porsche, starting in the following year, its capacity will increase even more to include a permanent new research and development satellite in China, allowing it to continue concentrating on what is its single largest market. The business is also stopping up its footprint in Southeast Asia's growing markets. Beyond initiatives like the rollout of the first cross-border high-performance charging network in the region, Porsche and Shell will establish a small-scale local assembly in Malaysia to add to the company's network of manufacturing facilities. The cars will only be offered in Malaysia and will be tailored to meet local needs. 2. Development of new SUVs and electric cars second opportunity has a weight of 0 0.11, being the third highest in the EFE matrix. With a rating of 4, Porsche has made more than sufficient effort to manage and leverage this opportunity. Porsche has seen gradual sales growth with their SUV models. With 88,362 buyers receiving a Macan, Porsche's SUVs were once again the models in the most demand globally in 2021. Second place went to the Porsche Cayenne with 83,071 units shipped. The all-electric Porsche Taycan had a remarkable growth. 41,296 clients received their vehicles, which is an increase of more than twice year over year. The sports car maker debuted the second body type, the Taycan Cross Turismo, in the spring of 2021. The delivery of a third variant, the Taycan Sport Turismo, will start in the spring of 2022, indicating that demand is likely to keep increasing. With Porsche's sales within the past few years, they are most likely to continue offering their SUV models with a number of variations and types. Two primary Porsche manufacturing facilities are located in Germany, in Lesbeck and Zuffenhausen, neighborhood of Stuttgart, the company's home base. A new local assembly for their SUV is soon to open in Malaysia, where Cayenne vehicles will only be produced for the local market. The Cayenne is also constructed in Slovakia. This answers why the result of the wait is for due to Porsche manufacturing and developing more models of their SUV offerings in their main plants in Germany and soon in Malaysia. In total, Porsche sold over 70,000 Porsche Taycans across the world, including over 41,000 in the previous 12 months. For comparison, the company sold 41,296 electric cars in 2021, more than doubling its previous record and accounting for 13.7% of the total volume. In regards to how the Taycan fares with the 911, the Taycan has previously beaten the 911 in sales races in quarters. More than twice as many Taycans were shipped by Porsche last year as were sold in 2020 the Taycan's first full year of sales. This means that Porsche has utilized their resources to focus on their SUV and electric car models and its steady sales growth. Three, development of new systems and processes. The third opportunity has a weight of 0 0.08, being the second least in weight in the EFE matrix. 
The rating of three, Porsche has made a sufficient effort to manage and leverage this opportunity. Porsche Volkswagen is able to create new processes and procedures by utilizing technologies like artificial intelligence, automation, real-time tracking of goods and services, 3D modeling for idea creation, and new product pilot testing, and etc. Porsche has also developed better synthetic fuel for the cars. Porsche claims that its cleaner synthetic fuel will enable older models of its performance car line to stay on the road for longer, despite the German luxury automaker making significant investments in electromobility. The electrofuels or e-fuels, as Porsche refers to them, these fuels will be generated from synthetic methanol and green hydrogen, both of which are sources of renewable energy. The fuel will burn similarly to gasoline made from crude oil, but without the significant emissions of greenhouse gases. Porsche owners, owners won't need to have their engines updated because it can be sold at the existing global network of gas stations. Aside from that, with the use of several algorithms, Porsche has developed a new technology that can identify and foretell when a car requires maintenance, while also creating a virtual facsimile of the genuine vehicle. The system is known as a digital twin. Thus, with the rating of three, Porsche has utilized technology and research to develop new systems and processes. Four, ease of restrictions and rise in demand. The fourth opportunity has a weight of 0 0.17, having the most importance in weight in the EFE matrix. With a rating of four, Porsche has made more than sufficient effort to manage and leverage this opportunity. With the ease of restrictions, it becomes ease. Simpler to supply goods to a larger population and geographic region. In addition to that, Porsche has prided themselves on quality manufacturing and global distribution. If they choose to capitalize on this and continue with great effort, their ongoing manufacturing and distribution practices, they will see major growth both within the industry and within the company itself. According to Gauche 2021, due to the continuous recovery from the pandemic and the ease of restrictions, luxury car makers were able to experience steady rise in demand. Companies within the luxury automotive industry have witnessed a similar trend wherein they are seeing orders piling up. Luxury car companies have reported substantial growth in sales and bookings. Number five, competitive advantage by utilizing computer science. The fifth opportunity has a weight of 0 0.07, having the most importance in weight in the EFE matrix. With the rating of three, Porsche has made sufficient effort to manage and leverage this opportunity. Porsche has put in a lot of time and money to incorporate analytics and machine learning into its business practices. This ongoing investment in analytics has made it possible to use analytics to create a competitive edge. Porsche can design speedier go-to-market strategies, greater customer insights, relevant product features, and a highly effective supply chain with the assistance of the analytics-driven competitive edge. Threats. Number one, challenges in government policies or regulatory challenges. The first threat has a weight of 0.07, having the second to the least importance in weight in the EFE matrix. With a rating of three, Porsche has made adequate effort to manage and minimize the certain threat. Porsche manufactures different specifications of the range at models that comply with the regulations set by the government of that specific country or market. An example of this is the European spec models, which are designated for the European market and the U.S. spec models designated for the U.S. market. European spec models are often also sold in Asia as they are able to comply with the regulations of most Asian countries. But these models cannot be sold in the U.S. because they are not compliant with the U.S. safety regulations. Thus, the need for a different specification. Porsche has continuously managed to successfully comply with the various regulations and policies in the different countries they market to. Number two, existing competition. With a weight of 0 0.15, the second threat has the most important weight in the EFE matrix. With a rating of two, Porsche has only made an average response to its existing competition. The competition has already started out strong and Porsche has only retorted with a subpar level of actions that are not enough to keep up. Given the capabilities that they have as a brand, Porsche did not push their limits in order to be in pace with its competitors. Knowing that they have a high level of customer loyalty, Porsche has been playing it safe and has always been behind its competitors in response to this threat. Number three, technological learning curve for new practices. This threat has a weight of 0.06, making it equally the, the least important threat. With a rating of three, Porsche has made adequate effort to manage and minimize the certain threat. Porsche has its engineers often make technological advancement 
and design new practices and processes on their own. It is uncommon for Porsche to outsource any new technologies as the brand is one of the leading brands in technical innovation within the automotive industry. Although many technological investments make for a deeper learning curve for new practices, Porsche themselves being the designers and innovators of said new practices make them more than capable of teaching and applying these practices. Number four, environmental challenges. This threat has a weight of 0 0.10, which makes it the second most important threat. For the rating of three, Porsche has made adequate effort to manage and minimize the certain threat. Porsche has been able to respond swiftly to this threat. As early as 2010, Porsche determined that the market had begun to shift, thus they began their pursuit of electrification. That same year, they introduced a Cayenne Hybrid, which was a vehicle that was partially powered by an electric battery. This made it very eco-friendly as it produced less emissions. Porsche has made great strides since then as now. In the present day, Porsche now have multiple hybrids in their model range and a fully electric vehicle that I can. Number five, consumer lifestyle changes. The weight of 0.06, this threat is equally the least important weight in the EFE matrix. For the rating of 2, Porsche has only made an average response to consumer lifestyle changes. The customers have substantial power because there are so many luxury brands and products to pick from. Porsche has created a brand with products that are not easily substitutable. Over the years, they have gained a high level of customer loyalty. This itself is a testament to the quality of products they produce. The Porsche name is almost synonymous with high performance, quality, and reliability. This is why so many customers remain loyal to the brand and the products. As Porsche continues to produce cars that exceed the expectations of their customers, there's little to no need for them to purposely and directly react to this threat with great urgency. So for conclusion, overall, the luxury automotive industry is a highly competitive and large-scale industry. Alongside Porsche, the industry is led by the likes of Mercedes-Benz and BMW. The automotive industry is a highly regulated industry due to CO2 emissions produced by the vehicles. This is even more so with luxury vehicles as they tend to be equipped with much larger engines and thus consume more fuel. With environmental issues such as climate change and global warming, the call for eco-friendly products that reduce our carbon footprint has grown greater and greater. With this, we see why the automotive industry is undergoing a shift. As customers and consumers' preferences begin to align with that of preserving the environment, demand for eco-friendly luxury vehicles continues to grow. In response to this, we see automobile manufacturers such as Porsche making technological advancement in electrical and electric-powered vehicles as they do not produce any emissions. We have seen a great, great advances and innovation within the automotive industry in the last few years, and it does not seem to be slowing down. More and more breakthroughs are made as we see manufacturers compete in creating the best products to suit the current and future market demand. We not only see advancement in vehicles, but in many processes and manufacturing methods as well. The luxury automotive industry seems to be growing and advancing at the pace it does because of healthy competition within the industry as competitors race to adopt the various external factors making changes in the market. As we compare Porsche to its higher revenue counterparts, namely Mercedes-Benz and BMW, we see these two competitors have much larger range of vehicles on the market. With that being said, we are given a glimpse of the potential success and growth Porsche has should they continue on the path they are on introducing more and more innovative products. Internal Company Analysis Revenue or Sales in the Past Three Years Porsche delivered a total of 280,800 automobiles to clients worldwide in its 2019 fiscal year, setting records for sales. Sales revenue increased by 11% to 28.5 billion euros, which is a 10% rise over the same quarter in 2018. The greatest return on sales before special goods in the automobile industry was 15.4%. Porsche generated record earnings of 28.7 billion euros in the fiscal year of 2020 despite the COVID-19 epidemic. Porsche's earnings increased in 2020 as well, reaching nearly 4.4 billion euros. More than 272,000 vehicles were supplied to consumers globally in total, a 3% decrease from the company's record-breaking year in 2019. Excluding Germany, Porsche's sales in Europe fell by just 4% and in 2020 compared to the previous year, 
whereas Germany, Porsche's home market, had a 17% reduction. Porsche's revenue and operating profit both reached new highs in 2021. According to the business, Porsche's revenue jumped by 15% year-over-year to 33.1 billion euros. Operating profit increased to 5.3 billion euros the year before. Porsche was able to raise its sales revenue, operational profit, and return on sales in the first half of 2022 despite a difficult climate for the whole automotive sector. The year has presented the auto industry with a severe task thus far, with supply challenges making it challenging for automakers to produce automobiles. Porsche has yet increased sales revenue by 8.5% to almost $17 billion, an operating profit by an astounding 24.6% to $2.7 billion despite this. The return on sales climbed to 19.4% despite the fact that fewer automobiles were delivered in the first half of this year than the first half of previous year. Applicable financial ratios. Any number greater than 1.0 is a good quick ratio. A quick ratio of 1.0 or higher typically indicates that the company is healthy and able to cover its debts. The industry average is 0.88. Porsche has a quick ratio of 1.07. Since this is greater than 1 and above the industry average, Porsche has good liquidity. The business is healthy and is able to cover its liabilities. As a general rule, a 10% net profit margin is regarded as average, a 20% margin is considered high, and a 5% margin is low. To be specific, the industry average where Porsche belongs is 10.18%. Porsche has a net profit margin of 12.20. This goes to show that the business has an above average net profit margin. The net profit margin is a measure of profitability. Since Porsche has an above average net profit margin, this means that the business is making a sufficient profit from sales and its operating costs and overhead costs are under control. Porsche has a debt to equity ratio of 1.24. According to the automotive industry, a good rule of thumb is to stay below a debt to equity ratio of 2. A debt to equity ratio of 2 means that the company's debt is 2 times its equity. A debt-to-equity ratio of 1 means that the company's debt is exactly equal to its equity. The industry average is 1.23. Since Porsche's debt-to-equity ratio is 1.24, this means that it is good that the company has a ratio below 2 and it is close to the industry average. Lastly, according to the British Business Bank, a good debt ratio is around 1 to 1.5. To it is common for capital-intensive industries such as manufacturing to have high debt ratios. Asset turnover ratio is a measure of revenue earned in relation to total assets. As a general rule, if the ratio is less than 1, it is bad for the business because the total assets cannot generate enough revenue at year's end. However, this will depend on the industry. For example, if the company's ratio is 1.09, and the asset turnover of the industry it belongs to is typically less than 0.5, this goes to show that even though this company has an asset turnover less than 1, the company is performing well. For the automotive industry, the average asset turnover ratio is 0.46. Porsche had an asset turnover ratio of 0.64. This goes to show that the business is performing well in this area since it is above the industry average. This means that the company is effectively using its assets to produce sales. Gross margin reveals whether the business sales are enough to pay expenses. For Porsche, the gross margin is 27%. The industry average is 16.38%. This means that Porsche's gross margin ratio is above the industry average. A good gross mar margin ratio means that the company was able to retain capital which it can utilize to cover other expenses or pay off debt. As compared to 2020, there is a 1% increase in gross margin in 2021. Businesses can use the operating return on sales ratio to determine how effectively a company can turn sales into operating profit. 
the company is making money if the ROS is higher than 0%. An ROS between 5% and 10% is excellent for the business. Porsche has an ROS of 16%. This indicates that Porsche is effectively managing its operating expenses and revenue streams. Additionally, examining historical trends can provide a more accurate prediction of growth. An increasing ROS indicates that the business is expanding productively. There is an increase in ROS in 2021 compared to 2020. B. Do an organizational diagnosis using McKinsey 7S model. Porsche uses the McKinsey 7S model to implement effective change management procedures and continuously improve company performance. Porsche concentrates on the seven components listed in the model to make sure that performance levels are consistently upheld and enhanced for the products. The McKinsey 7S model's hard aspects are strategy, structure, and systems. The model's hard aspects are easier to recognize, more tangible in character, and directly controlled and impacted by the organization's leadership and management. So on the table, we have hard element strategy. So for Porsche, they're clearly defined, they direct behavior towards goal achievement, there's competing demands, shifting customer preferences, and ad adaptability and flexibility. Next is structure. Organizational structure, interdisciplinary cooperation, team dynamics within the business, a combination of centralization and decentralization and communication. Lastly, systems. Existing organizational structures, specific system controls, observing and assessing controls, internal organizational alignment procedures. And for soft elements, we have shared values, key principles, occupational culture, task, and value alignment. Next is skills, employee abilities, employee abilities and task specifications, management ability and competitive advantage of the company. Next is style, style of management or leadership, the success of the chosen leadership approach, internal competition, cooperation, effective and functional teams. Lastly, how is staff, goals of the company, employees, skill levels, number of personnel and deficiencies and necessary talents and competencies. Strategy. All Porsche workers and stakeholders are informed of the company's strategic direction and overall business plan. As a result, the organization is better able to oversee performance, direct actions, and develop various strategies that are in line with the company's goals. Additionally, Porsche's operations are made more transparent and the company's duties and actions are in line thanks to the creation and communication of the business plan. The strategic direction for Porsche is crucial in assisting the company in directing stakeholder employee, and staff behavior toward the pursuit and accomplishment of objectives. According to the company plan, SMART goals are established with short and long-term deadlines. Employees make decisions about strategies and behaviors to accomplish and establish goals and targets in order to advance the company's success. Porsche strategy also considers demands of competition and rival activity. The strategy takes on these competitive challenges by suggesting actions and measures to deal with competition through strategic tactics and activities that ensure Porsche's sustainability by adjusting to market changes, changing consumer preferences, and evolving consumer trends. The fact that Porsche's strategy constantly considers shifting consumer trends and wants, as well as shifting consumer market patterns and consumption behavior, is a key component of the strategy. This is a crucial component of Porsche's strategic direction since it enables the company to maintain its competitiveness and relevance with its target consumer groups, as well as to spot demand gaps in the consumer market. The company then proactively closes these gaps through its product offerings and marketing initiatives, giving it the competitive edge over other market trends. Porsche's strategy is versatile and flexible. This is a crucial component of Porsche's strategic direction and strategy setting. Rigidity and technique causes a corporation and organization to become stagnant, obstructing innovation and progression with changing consumer marketplaces. With its flexibility and responsiveness, Porsche is able to gain not just the promptly from promptly reacting and responding to changing consumer patterns globally, but also from locally and culturally adapting its goods through localization for diverse countries and areas. Furthermore, the, corpor the corporation is frequently capable of anticipating consumer market shifts and creating strategic improvements to meet industry and market trends. Porsche, like every other business, has a variety of difficulties throughout the production process, both internal and exterior ones. 
It needs to be emphasized that Porsche targets the upper middle class, which causes it to lose a lot of middle class clients. The hefty costs involved with car maintenance and production are one of the causes of that. One other difficulty that Porsche is facing in terms of their overall brand strategy is the change of brand image. Due to the deviation from the classic Porsche image, their precipitation to SUVs and sedans could dilute the Porsche brand name and ultimately ruin the distinctive Porsche image of traditional two-door sports car models.